John here, and today I'm going to be going over using Protobuf in Unity. Basically, Protobuf is just an alternative to XML or using the binary formatter in .NET. Um, the difference here is that Protobuf is a lot faster to use, the file sizes are really small, and if you're developing on iOS, you can also use it for that as well. Um, if you tried using binary formatter on iOS, you would get JIT compile errors because just because of the way binary formatter works, it compiles certain code as soon as it's run, and iOS doesn't really like that. What we're going to be using for this, um, I'm, going to be do, I'm going to be doing things in Visual Studio um, because I'm going to be compiling DLLs, and I just like doing it in Visual Studio. And we're also going to be grabbing protobuf from Mark Gravel's Google Code site right here. Um, I'll be providing a link in the description so you don't have to sit here and search or try and manually copy that link out at the top. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're going to download that. Once you do, we're going to open up the zip file and going to go into the full folder unity and we're going to drag out the protobuf.net because that's really the only thing that we need all right now I'm going to open up visual studio I'm going to create a brand new project eventually run Visual Studio. There we go. And we're going to create a class library. And this is going to be uh, the project that holds all of the classes that are going to be saved to the disk. So uh, that can be just general game save data, options data, um, yeah, basically anything that you're planning on actually saving. So call that, we'll just call it save data. Derp. All right. Now Unity likes to complain, or at least it used to, about the uh, the target framework for .NET. So what we want to do is go into Project, Save Data Properties, and change the .NET framework to 2.0. Yes. All right. And then once we do that, uh, we'll get rid of some of these because these usings aren't necessary. And all right, so we're almost ready to go. Next thing we need to do is reference protobuf in our project. So we're going to click on our references add reference and we'll go over to browse and we're going to go to our protobuf.net DLL that we just saved I put it on my desktop so that's where I'm going to be going um, wherever you saved it obviously that's where you're going to want to go all right so now that protobuf is referenced by a project we're going to include that up at the top. So using proto buff. Remember that's a capital B on buff. And here I'm just going to meet, be making some really generic classes. They may not be useful to you, but uh, it'll just give you the general idea. Now before we create a class, we're going to add an attribute to it. And it's going to be called proto contract and this basically just tells protobuf that this is something that can be serialized All right, so this will be might help if I uh, know how the program so public class item just make a really generic item class All right so now that we have our class we're gonna start putting the variables in and for each variable, we're going to want to 
also include an attribute called proto member. So we'll go public string name for the name of the item, and we'll give it the attribute proto member. And we also need to give it an index. That way, protobuf knows which variable is being accessed or is being serialized and saved. And we're going to want to make sure that the index is different on each one. So we'll go proto member two, and then public int price for the price of the item, and. Uh, Sure, that's good enough for now. And then from here we can just make the class like normal. So we'll put in the constructor. And then we'll just give it a default name of you know, item and a default price of I don't know, ten thousand. Why not? And we'll just make another generic constructor and sure let's just make another one just because we can we'll let's say the game has achievements so we'll make another proto contract attribute public class trophy and we'll go with the proto member attribute again public string name of the trophy and another proto member and we'll go public string description for the trophy and then just the generic construct or constructors so name is trophy why not and description description goes here and we'll just kind of do some copying and pasting and sure why not? Good enough. All right, so we have our two classes here, and our project's all set up. We have our DLLs referenced. So what we're going to do is just build it. And now we have the compiled DLL with our two classes that are going to be saved. And if you're using just PC or Android, uh, we're perfectly fine. This is all we need, and uh, you're good to go. If you're using iOS, we need to take this just one step farther, and we need to create another new Visual Studio project, and this time we're going to be compiling a data serializer. Um, this is to get over the, uh, the just-in-time compiling that uh, .NET likes to do, and that iOS doesn't really enjoy. So what we're going to do is create a brand new project. And instead of a class library, this one's going to be a console application. And we're going to since it's going to be actually serializing all of our data, we'll just call it data serializer. Alright, so just like before, we want to edit the properties and change the target framework to 
Yes. All right, and once it's done that, open up our program again, and we're going now. We're going to add our references, and this time, let's go back to our old project. Go into the bin folder, and we're going to drag in, or we're going to select both of these DLLs because it copied in the protobuf DLL and we also need to reference all the classes all right so now that we have everything all linked up I'm going to use the save data which is the namespace of our old project and we're going to Use protobuf dot meta. All right. Now this is going to be actually running a program that's going to compile a DLL that can serialize everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a type model. So we're going to go var model equals type model dot create and what we're going to do with model is we're going to add all of the types that were in our save data project and we're going to hit true because we want to apply the default behavior Um, these uh, allow parsable types. I'll set the true and add missing types. Oops. Uh, add missing types. Set that to true as well. That way, it'll it won't uh, go crazy if you start changing things. And here we're going to compile our data serializer into a DLL. And here we'll just run the program. Now if you right click on your data serializer project and open folder in Windows Explorer, if we go into our bin and debug, we'll see we have the data serializer DLL, protobuf, and we also have this save data DLL, which is what we'll be using to uh, actually save and load data um, on iOS or any project really it just uh, makes it easier alright so now that we have our DLLs we'll open up our Unity project create a plugins folder and we're going to drag these guys right in there All right, now that we have the three DLLs in our project, I'm going to create a C-sharp script so that we can access them wherever. It's basically a wrapper for protobuf. It makes it a lot easier to use. And I'm going to call it protoloader. All right, so I'll open up that bad boy. eventually when mono behavior decides to work. There we go. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do, get rid of this, and I'm going to go using 
system.io since we're going to be accessing files. And this is not going to be a modern behavior class because it doesn't need to be. Um, it, we're actually going to make it a static class. Get out of there. All right. First thing I'm going to do is create the data serializer from the Visual Studio project. So we're going to go private static data serializer, and we'll just call it m underscore serializer equals new data serializer. Oh, might help if I put an equal there. All right. Now the first function I'm going to create in this class is going to be called load object from resources. And it's going to do exactly that. You're going to give it a resource path and it's going to return the object. So public static t templated class load object from resources and t again string resource path. And I need another bracket. There we go. So we're going to grab a text asset called object asset from resources. Resources.load resource path type of text asset so it only looks for text assets. And we'll cast it as a text asset using as. All right. Next, we want to check and see if the object asset is null. And if it is, we're going to return default t. And that's basically the uh, same thing as returning null when you're using a templated function. Uh, so now we want to create the actual object deserialized object. Equals. Give it a default value, and we're going to use a using statement. So using memory stream, and we'll call it m equals new memory stream. And we're going to pass in the bytes of object asset. The serialized object equals m underscore serializer dot deserialize memory stream null because we don't need a value there and type of t and we're going to return to serialized object. All right, so I went through that pretty quick, but basically what it does is. This is a templated class, so you're going to pass in the type that uh, you want back, whether that's a list of items or just uh, game save data. We load the text asset from the resource path. This function is assuming that you saved it as a .bytes file in resources. If it's null, we just return a default value, which usually ends up being null. Uh, we create our deserialized object, just something to hold the value. Using a memory stream, we pass the bytes into memory, and then we use the serializer to actually create an object out of those bytes, and then we just return the deserialized object. Okay. The next function is going to be very similar. Uh, instead of lo loading it from resources, we're going to load it from a path. Public static t, no, t. Load object from path. And just like before, it's going to be a templated class using t. And string path. All right. So instead of loading it from resources, this is going to load it from a static path. 
um, whether that's going to be the uh, the normal save data area that you use in Unity or uh, you for some reason save something to the desktop, whichever. That's what's going to be passed in as the path. So the first thing we're going to do is check if a file actually exists. So if file dot exists path or if not yeah if a file does not exist we're going to return that default value and if it did we'll just keep going so we're going to go with the deserialized object again equals the default value and instead of a memory stream we're going to use a file stream. So new file stream and we're going to pass in path and we're wanting to open the file so file mode dot open and we're just going to basically do the exact same thing Realized. So deserialized object equals T and the serializer dot deserialize F, which is our file stream, null and type of T. And then we're just going to return the deserialized object again. So we took care of loading, now we'll take care of saving, because you are probably going to be wanting to save some sort of data. So what we're going to do is create a function called save object to path, templated once more, and this time we're going to go with string object path as a parameter, string file name, for the actual file name, and t for the object that is going to be saved. So first thing we want to do is make sure that the directory is there that was passed in object path. Um, so if, and if it's not, we'll create it. So if the directory does not exist, exist, object path, directory dot create directory, object path. So that basically just generates the folder structure if it's not already there. And we're going to be using a file stream again. So we'll call it f equals new file stream object path plus the file name. These needed to be kept separate because creating a directory with the uh, file name just kind of causes issues and the file mode this time will be open or create so it'll open a file if it's already there or create a new one if there's not all right and here we're just going to use our serializer and serialize the file stream so f and serialized object. All right, that makes sense. If the directory is not there, create it using a file stream with our paths. We'll just serialize the object to that file. Mm. All right, there's two more functions, and these are more useful for. Um, I found when doing networking code, um, you can serialize an object using protobuf and then deserialize it on the other end. 
so you can actually send entire objects over the network. Uh, Unity, I don't think it's documented now, but it, it never was uh, prior to this. Um, you, using uh, RPC calls, you can actually send an array of bytes over the network. Um, in the documentation, it only says you can uh, send strings and vectors and that sort of thing. Um, but you can actually send byte arrays. So you can send entire objects over the network. Uh, and using this wrapper, it makes it 10 times easier. So what I'm going to do is create another function. And it's going to return a byte array. And it's going to be called serialize, if I can spell it right, serialize proto object. And this will be a templated class. And the parameter will be t and obj for object. All right. So using a memory stream. Call m equals new memory stream. And we're going to use the serializer to serialize the object into that memory stream. And then we're going to return the memory stream dot to array. And that will return all of the bytes in memory. And then the function that goes with it, which would be on the other end of the networking game, will be public static t. It's going to return the templated class and deserialize proto object and t. And we're going to pass in the byte array, and we'll just call it bytes. All right, so once again, using this memory stream, we'll call m equals new memory stream, and this time we'll pass in bytes. And we will just return the deserialized object, so m underscore serializer dot deserialize, not deep clone, deserialize the memory stream, null type of t. All right. And that's it. So now you know how to bring in protobuf, serialize data, and you have this nice little wrapper class. It's all nice and fancy and takes care of lots of stuff for you. Oh my god. Anyways, that's it for now. So, have fun. And hopefully uh, this was useful for you. Hmm.